Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association webinar series. And today we will be joined by uh, Reverend Father Ted Gonzalez, one of our uh, board of directors of the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association. But before we start, uh, for the information of everyone, uh, we would like to present our company profile, our, our uh, the group. Okay. So the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association, uh, uh, this uh, webinar series is our commitment uh, to uh, for all guidance counselors and other helping professionals to promote mental health and social responsibility. So we are the integrated uh, accredited professional organization of uh, the PRC, and we are also a service, uh, a continuing a professional education provider. Before we are known as the Philippine Guidance and Personnel Association. Uh, now our vision to become the premier Philippine professional organization of counselors with international recognition. And our mission is to commit uh, uh, to be in the forefront of uh, in the development of counselors who are professional, goal-driven, committed advocates, responsive to the needs of their clientele in the promotion of their well-being, to make them proactive contributors in the pursuit of just and humane society. Uh, now, uh, uh, part of our history in 1964, uh, the late father Jaime Bulatao and uh, now the uh, Archbishop of uh, Cagayan de Oro, Antonio Ledesma, both uh, from Ateneo, they have this uh, idea and they presented uh, it to Dr. Esperanza Limcaco of UP uh, to uh, organize a professional organization of guidance workers. And uh, after that, in 1981, the PGCA became the member of Western Region of the American Counseling Association, or ACA. And we are the only counseling association in Asia that is given the privilege by the U.S. National Counseling Association. Remember, uh, the, uh, before, our counselors uh, were trained in the U.S. And uh, because of that, we were able to build partnerships and recognition with our U.S. Uh, counselor counterparts. And in 2018, to further uh, fulfill our mission, the PGCA forged partnerships with the Australian Counseling Association and with the Association of Psychotherapists and Counselors, Singapore, or APACS. So the usual activities of the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association is the annual convention, which we usually held in May. Uh, but because of COVID-19, we have to postpone it together with, with our major convention. Uh, we have also continuing professional education programs and courses. Uh, 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 just like this one, and uh, specialized trainings for our counselors. We have research and publication. The PGCA is producing um, research journals. And part of our social responsibility is to, uh, is to give back to the general public uh, what we have learned and uh, uh, as part of our mission. So this free webinar series is also our uh, part of our social responsibility and we are building partnerships as uh, as of broadcast time we are currently having our uh, meeting with the, the together with the Unilab Foundation and the Department of Education for the provision of mental health and psychosocial support for the upcoming school opening so that's part of our partnerships now as the accredited the accredited integrated professional organization the PGCA, uh, under uh, its umbrella, are the PACERS, or the Philippine Association of Council for Counselor Education, Education and Research. Supervision, uh, sorry, uh, IPCAP, then SSC, IOTA Phi, APECA, CDAP, and FCGNAP. Now, here are our board of directors. Uh, 
uh, please join us also in our different social media accounts uh, for our Facebook. Please like and follow PGSA Official and uh, uh, please follow also our Twitter account, Official PGCA. And right now, we are uh, streamed live via YouTube at PGSA Philippine Counselor. And uh, the YouTube link can be found also in our PGCA official Facebook page. Uh, a few reminders for our uh, participants. For our concerns with certificates, don't uh, or please uh, refrain from messaging with our Facebook page. Rather, you please uh, email directly PGCA Sir. Okay, uh, sorry for the typo error. It should be PGCA certificate, certificate at gmail.com. And our webinar is streamed via YouTube and the shared link in the PGSA official page. Okay, thank you for that. At this time, uh, before we start, may I request everyone to please, uh, would like to invite you to pause for a moment for a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, loving and gracious Father. We thank you for another day of uh, bringing uh, blessings, graces, and wonder. Thank you for the gift of life, of community, friendship, uh, and the presence of everyone around. Send forth your Holy Spirit so that we may might fulfill your, uh, your commandment to love one another and uh, uh, through this webinar, we may be able to understand ourselves and others for the greater glory of your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the amen. Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. So good morning again, everyone. Uh, may I now turn over to you to Father Ted for this webinar series or this webinar right now. Mental Health Lessons from the Masters. Father Ted. Thank you, Francis. Okay, you may. I will just get my slides, okay? Yes, Bob. Okay, can you see it now? Yes. Uh, yeah, can you see? Yes, Father. Okay, thank you very much, Francis. Okay, uh, as you can see, uh, this is a follow-up of our uh, series of uh, webinars uh, at the service of our counselors, our teachers, our guidance advocates, and those who are interested just to make sense of this uh, mental health especially in this time of new normal and in this uh, COVID times, uh, COVID-19, where people are in quarantine and uh, on lockdown at different levels in different parts of the Philippines and around the world. We still uh, experience uh, many uh, people afflicted with this uh, uh, virus in the Philippines, especially about 25,000 plus so uh, say a prayer for them and also our frontliners, our doctors. Uh, say a prayer also for those who are sick people in various capacities and also uh, that uh, we may have that uh, resilient spirit, mental wellness within us. Okay, so my topic is uh, master's lessons in the field of counseling or therapy. Let me just give you some background about this topic, no? Okay, uh, some pre-notes. When I say mental health, of course, you already, some of a, num a number of our uh, uh, speakers already have spoken uh, about the different aspects of mental health. But for me, mental health is not just mental. It covers the whole person. And the whole person, of course, for the health, it means wellness. It's like a wholeness. And in various aspects of our lives, the way we feel, the way we think, the way we act, no, especially uh, with significant people of our lives, of course, our own selves, 
uh, family relationships, uh, work, no finances, physical, and of course, spiritual also included. In other words, we have a range when we talk about in when we go for studies, we always talk about this range you know, or spectrum of coping. Now, a little background. I like this. Uh, you can see light and people, you know, light spread here. The whole idea is we can receive light from people around us, like God is in all things and around us, and especially with some people who have had an influence in our lives. Okay, just some, uh, some more notes before we start. For me, I had my own personal teachers or masters, formators. I call them Apo. I will talk about that in a short while. Uh, I will give that uh, later on, some of them, no? Uh, Father Ferriols, Father Nebres, Father Tanseco, Father Nilo, Father Bulatao. Of course, our parents also. They're part of the people who shape our lives. And then these are just some lessons. Of course, uh, these are not exhaustive of uh, the teachings that our uh, masters in therapy or counseling uh, have taught us. There's more to learn. These are just uh, sampler or samplings. No? And then number three, of course, I said that already, mental health. No, It is uh, mental wellness. Mental includes perspectives, attitudes, coping, good habits, resiliency, dispositions, virtues, strength, spirituality, of course, including also some, some of us have had experience of uh, some difficulties in the functioning or dysfunctionalities, no? And it needs more treatment. And of course, uh, part of my pre-notes would be how I tried to apply this, no? Theory and practice, especially with uh, family ministries and beyond. So from CEFAM, but also I tried it in different parts of the Philippines and different sectors of society. Apo, maybe you're wondering what is this Apo or masters, no? Apo in the Philippines, it would be Lolo, no? Uh, like in the north, Apo, no? Or uh, in the Philippines, uh, like for example, in the central Luzon, uh, like in, the, in Pampanga, Apo, no? These are the elders. And of course, yung, uh, in Manila or in Tagalog area, we say Apo, no? This, uh, the, the, this grandson or granddaughter, of course, um, uh, these are elders, no? And um, Apo is about wisdom. People we respect, no? They have perspectives that they teach us. So we owe them some, we owe them some reverence because uh, somehow they influence the way we think. And of course, uh, in Mindanao, the highest peak in the country is Mount Apo. Uh, a fellow priest, a friend of mine, Father Manny Flores, he gave me a stick, no? A, uh, from a stump, from like a staff from Mount Apo. And I treasure that. I don't know if you can see it. It's beha behind me, no? It is from Mount Apo. The, uh, the one beside my books, shelves. Okay. Uh, Cory Aquino, uh, she said that uh, progress, no? Hungers for mysticism, for power, should be channeled in the service of love, drawing from the great ideals of religion. Holy men and women can help perfect human nature, uh, not just religion, but uh, uh, human science, no? There's so much to learn. And of course, I ask myself, especially during these times, no? Where we need uh, good leaders, among us, I call, I ask myself, nasaan si Apo sa kanyang mga Apo, no? Okay, these are just some of my, uh, the people I respect, no? And I won't mention their names, but you recognize them. We need good leaders to shine, especially in this moment of our lives, no? In the, in the Philippines now. And this is uh, Joey Velasco, no? Uh, he was uh, ill. Uh, there was a time when he was diagnosed with some, I don't know if it was liver or kidney. And uh, that particular time of his life when he had sickness, it was also a time to shine. That was a time when he began to paint a lot of, uh, you know, uh, things uh, that really touched him. And Christ among 
especially the poor sectors of society. Uh, me, of course, I come from the Society of Jesus. My mentor, my uh, the person, my founder is uh, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, uh, who influenced a lot of the Jesuits. And uh, these are the people I admire in my life. Uh, I remember Father Bulatao. One time, he, you know, uh, he was already uh, partially blind. The one here, Father Bulatao. Uh, he was partially blind and he was um, like uh, the celebrant for a wedding, no? one, of, uh, her, one of his students. And, uh, and Father Bulato, you know, I accompanied him and, uh, and after the mass, I asked him, Father Boo, you know, how, how are you able to do many creative stuff like uh, this sinasapian, no? parang possession, and uh, also yung... Uh, altered state of consciousness, uh, Filipino values. And as you can see, Father Bulata was also one of the founders of uh, Philippine Guidance Counseling Association in the earlier days. No? And I asked him, no, how were you able to do that, Father Boo? You know what he said? Ted, he said, you immerse yourself in the experience and you reflect upon it. That's what he said. You, know? you, you immerse yourself in the experience and you reflect upon it. In other words, have a good foundation in theory and then you apply it. And then uh, of course on the right is Father Nebres. Father Nebres used to be the, our Dean in the Loyola School of Theology in here in the Loyola House of Studies. And then he was also um, president of the Ateneo. He was also a provincial and many other important uh, leadership functions he did. He was also a mathematician. So Father Nebres knows about this, uh, you know, multiple regression and whatever, no? And I, uh, one time I, we had this uh, program, it's called uh, Agimat Ni Apo, and uh, it's about leadership and spirituality. And I asked Father uh, Nebres, uh, Father uh, Ben, can you be part of our speakers, no? So he removed his glasses and then he looked at the, you know, the... Uh, uh, particular uh, what will happen in the outline and he said okay I'm in I suppose in our life we need support of people that somehow uh, we have something to share and I thank him uh, for his support no uh, for his uh, uh, sometimes as young people we we begin to start out with our uh, ministry and our work and sometimes we need, uh, you know, some encouragement. And I felt encouraged by him. Here I have uh, one other teacher. Uh, when I started in Sefam, Father uh, Ruben Tanseco. Father Ruben is a very clear teacher. And uh, he started Marriage Encounter. And uh, he really uh, made a difference in the lives of many families, you know. And, uh, and even in counseling, he was a very clear teacher. So I owe him for that. And of course we have here on the right, this is uh, Father Nilo Tanalega. Father Nilo, when I was starting as a priest and a counselor, he started counseling for the poor. And uh, he also worked with uh, like helping skills for couples. And uh, I, I work with him and I like him for his, uh, you know, allowing you to be creative. Okay, so that's uh, Father Nilo. What I did uh, in my work, I tried to uh, apply uh, like theory and practice, no? In various capacities, I, uh, one more story. I was coming from the master's program uh, in the U.S. and I studied at the Loyola School, Loyola uh, College in Maryland. I finished my pastoral counseling, and then I was uh, I received two letters after my master's. One letter said, uh, "Ted, uh, I think we think the school was saying that we think, and the faculty was saying, you know, you are a potential candidate, especially for the doctoral program." So that's one letter. Wow, I felt good because I was being invited to continue the doctoral program. And then uh, I had another letter and it says, Ted, you come home. My superiors in the Philippines wanted me to return to the Philippines. So two letters. 
one says you stay in the US for further studies. Another letter says you come home. Of course, uh, that time what I felt was I had uh, I had vertigo and I was vomiting because uh, in a sense uh, my choice was really to obey you know, uh, my superiors. But uh, I asked myself, do I really need the PhD program? Do I need the title? And then I, uh, I was really having soul searching. And then I began to look into my soul. And, uh, and then uh, later I'll go back to that. And then I, I began to say to myself, I want to be creative. That is what I learned from Father Ferriol. He said, you go back to the original, go to the originals. And then in science, like Thomas Kuhn, in the, uh, this uh, science of scientific revolution, no? or the uh, theory of scientific revolutions, that uh, if you want to, to uh, have new science, you have to respect the old science. So in other words, uh, part of me was saying, I want to be grounded with, uh, and with good foundation with the founders in my field. That's why the interest of this, uh, this uh, founders in the field no? or the masters in the field. Uh, and, and I said to myself, I will doctor myself. Well, what I'm really saying is I want to go back to the founders in my field. I want to be creative. And therefore I tried to, because of this foundation, I was able to understand more my work in individual, marital, the engaged couples and families. But I went beyond. I was able to work uh, counseling for the poor and then uh, counseling uh, in times of disaster, uh, good governance, and then addictions and recovery, even working with widows and orphans, and now during this COVID-19. But I also work with uh, various uh, uh, people in the life cycle. I call it the life's journey. We have uh, life's directions for young professionals, on fire, uh, sexuality and spirituality, the, the life's directions for people making decisions. And then uh, I had also uh, something for the connection of uh, imagination in reading. I call it BASA. No? And of course, I told you already about this agreement, ni Apo. Uh, and then these are some of the uh, ideas no? we learn, virtues we learn from the masters uh, in the Philippine setting. And then I call it Mekay Kaba and then uh, Gabay program, and then uh, some of the elders, of course, the San Jose uh, for uh, fathers and Maria. And of course, uh, during this time of COVID-19, I spoke to you already about these crown gems. Okay, let me now start with some of the lessons I've learned from the masters in the field. Okay, the first lesson I learned, these are not exhaustive, okay? These are just some lessons, some of this I have taught already with my students, and, but I'm trying to review it now. So please bear with me. So the first one is follow the pain. Uh, it has a history and story, okay, this follow the pain. Uh, what is that? If you remember um, uh, this uh, Carl Rogers, when he was uh, starting as a therapist and a counselor, he uh, had this, this uh, patient, no? a client and a counselee, he was burning the whole house. So this kid, he was a pyromaniac. After a while, he gave up. He didn't know how to deal with this uh, patient, no, who was trying to burn the whole house. But uh, the mom, so he, uh, he told this mom, and you know, I, it seems like I cannot help your, your, um, your kid. So uh, he was almost giving up. And then this, um, uh, so he was saying goodbye already. And then the mom returned, the mother of the kid returned. And she said, do you take adults here? And then uh, the therapy started, no? And you have, um, you have uh, uh, this woman, this mother who was uh, unfolding the fire happening in the house, the relationship uh, she had with the husband, the pain she was going through. So you can see that uh, when we say follow the pain, you will find out that uh, uh, sometimes in the story of our counselees, there are roots, there's a history, 
like even this uh, disgusting there, it means uh, this is taken from uh, Sigmund Freud. And uh, as you can see, I mentioned already uh, Carl Rogers and now Sigmund Freud. And then uh, uh, he was telling a story of this uh, Anna O. And Anna had a lot of illnesses in her body. And of course, uh, she was already uh, uh, seen by the doctors, but they could not see anything. They could not uh, find anything that is wrong with her until she began to talk about what was disgusting in her life. This was a big lesson for, uh, for uh, Sigmund Freud, that until people begin to like, uh, talk about what is hurting them, well, however you call it, whether it's pain or what is disgusting, uh, and then we call it there is catharsis. Of course, uh, Sigmund Freud was talking about like uh, to to clear, no, this um, uh, what's this? Uh, clearing something, no, clearing this uh, chimney. He calls it no, clearing the chimney, and uh, then uh, somehow uh, the soul or inside is. Uh, somehow uh, lighter, no? Because we talk about, yeah, here. So uh, what are we trying to do? Uh, hopefully we can identify whatever fears we have at this current times where we have this COVID-19. There will be a lot of uh, people talking about their anxiety, parang napapraning, mga ganun. Of course, losses, many people are dying, no? And uh, me as a priest, I've had so many Zoom masses already with people who have died. And of course, uh, I've had contact with people in the frontliners, different sectors of society, and just to ask them how they are. And they talk about uncertainties, insecurities, helplessness, even trauma, not knowing when this will stop. Of course, you have already heard about the fear of not no income coming in. Business, you know, affected. And many OFWs returning you have uh so it's only now slowly business is coming in but of course you have to balance it with this uh, uh not to be overconfident because uh as you can see we haven't really flattened the curve so what do we have we have this um we have uh still uh as i said earlier about twenty-six thousand plus people uh, diagnosed with this uh, covid 19. so a uh, lesson we are trying to learn is follow the pain, name the pain, claim the pain. In other words, allow uh, ourselves to, when we listen to, especially about this mental health, it is important to see what hurts people. And second, uh, maybe uh, some ideas. One, allow people to tell their, their stories, no? Tell your story. Uh, in other words, like breathing. Remember uh, this uh, COVID-19 is uh, a lot of pneumonia. So it's a breathing problem. It's important that they breathe out, especially uh, our people affected, uh, and to breathe out uh, what is inside, especially the family members, no? how to lighten the burden. Second, how to give importance to the process. Uh, this is taken from Carl Rogers. Uh, he says that it's like giving birth to a new person. And third, understand the pain, be compassionate, embrace the pain. These are like the attitudes that uh, Carl Rogers was talking about. No, uh, Be compassionate, of course, empathy. That's what it is, okay? Okay, now maybe some practical things you can use while you are uh, listening to people, especially uh, they say teachers and guidance counselors, guidance advocates will be asking the first week when school opens, how, what can we do? And people are always asking, what can we ask our students? Now you can ask this. What hurts you the most? Young people, sometimes they don't know what pain is, but they talk about what hurts no? inside or how they were affected by this uh, uh, lockdown or this uh, quarantine. And then if you look into your heart, what will it say? This one is like uh, listening to your body. If you look into your heart, what will it say? What is your greatest worry or fear or loss? Okay, of course, it depends on uh, our, our clients. No, uh, depends on the people we are listening. Uh, depends on the students or teachers or, or the people, the family members. The second lesson that we've learned is, uh, this is taken from this uh, uh, Skinner, no, B.F. Skinner. 
And one of the lessons I've learned is uh, uh, chart the stimulus response. In other words, we're all affected, okay? The thing here is to know the, this pattern or dynamics. Okay, now what is that? The keyword here would be the triggers and the destructive behavior. So I always uh, ask people, uh, when did this start, of course? And uh, what happens when, like I have a friend of mine, he says, uh, he's pa he passed away already. He says that when, when the wife always says, Ikaw ang tali -tali mo, tas wala kang kinikita. You know, that really hurts him. That's when he blows up, you know? So, uh, and uh, that is what triggers him. So it's important, like for example, if we look into, as we listen to people, to, to see their history, to see what uh, is recurring pattern for them. Even like uh, addiction, when, when does uh, uh, addiction take place? Uh, I call this, uh, what arouses you, you know? So in other words, to find this stimulus, in our life, there are things that uh, even drug addicts, they know that they're the weakest when they say uh, they are uh, tired, you know? when they are hungry, when they're angry, when they are lonely, or, or when they feel uh, this uh, lust in their life and tired, of course. So you have hunger, halt, hunger, anger, lust or loneliness and then tiredness so to know no what are when are the times when ah the young people uh, talk about this and they say when they are vulnerable when are we aroused no when, when when are we vulnerable okay what are the lessons the lessons we learn i we can just repeat bad habits or we can have good habits now this is important because um in the discussions on who are the people who do well in this covid 19 times who are the people who are able to manage well ah these are the people with meaningful rituals or meaningful not just routine but good habits at this time of course these are the people who have like a schedule during the day it is sometimes very uncertain uh, as i told you already uh, we don't know when this will end but the people who have good habits you know, they have set time for, because people do work from home. They have a time when they can work, but they also know a time when they have to do household chores for their family. They have a time for their exercise. They have a time to, you know, reach out to people and many things. So you have this, they have a time like this time, you have a time for webinar. So what I'm just saying is to have good habits in place. Okay, now uh, some tips that we have. Record the dynamics of the event and its effect. That's why I always ask, uh, uh, how are you affected? And sometimes not just how are you affected, but how are you affected all the time? Sometimes when we have experience of frustration, we get, you know, we get, uh, we get affected. When we hear someone gets sick, like, uh, for example, I have a brother who he learned that he had this... Uh, he had this uh, biopsy that, uh, you know, he has this uh, renal carcinoma, which is really kidney cancer. We don't know the extent, but of course, uh, there is some worry. And sabi niya, I feel sad, malungkot. No? And uh, of course, me as a brother, I, I get uh, also concerned about him. So what is the effect on us? No? And then second, notice what influences good and bad behavior. So it's good to find out, you know. Um, what uh, makes people have good motivation and good behavior or bad behavior? Uh, you can see that among drug addicts, for example, they say, ah, bad influence. The people who, you know, of course you have uh, drug pushers, etc. cetera. No? Uh, and then third, uh, do more of the good habits to have good outcome. This one is also based from, remember uh, this, uh, uh, the Jazer, they talk about, uh, look for in the, in the story of people and their dynamics. Find out what works, what works be best for them. So find out their good habits and, it, and then when it happens. No? To chart, that's why I told you about chart, no? to review. It's almost like a journal. When they have a journal of uh, you know, blessings and, uh, and some of the things that uh, affect them, uh, to really see patterns no, that happens in their life. 
And of course, uh, this one I like. I learned this from one of the my mentors. Uh, he's a psychiatrist. And uh, when I was in training in, at a veterans hospital, by the way, I told you that uh, uh, I returned home from my master's. But uh, after about seven years, I was allowed to go back for my doctoral program. And I had a good uh, psychiatrist. And he said, uh, I, I noticed the way he handled the uh, patients. And he said, uh, when did your trouble start? I like that uh, question. When did your trouble start? So even uh, for myself, when I listen in counseling, I ask them, uh, how long has this been going on? You know, this uh, frustration or this uh, anxiety. Uh, I, um, I remember uh, one uh, medical student I had, an intern, and uh, I asked permission to share this. And, and when, uh, you know, a year and a half ago, he stopped med school and he felt depressed and anxious. Uh, of course, the routine is already very hard at this uh, prestigious uh, uh, medical institution. And uh, also uh, he saw his father die, you know, and he was trying to revive him. But, uh, you know, since that time, he just uh, lost interest in med school. He was very close to his father and, um, Somehow he was so scared, no? But I tell you the good news. Uh, yesterday I spoke to him, and he said, uh, as uh, he had more time for gardening, and of course we had time for counseling, and uh, and also he was seeing this uh, santol tree that his father, and also the mango tree that uh, the santol tree was uh, was bearing abundant harvest and santol uh, fruits, no? And even the mango tree, uh, the, this uh, Indian mango, uh, yeah, he said he was so busy just picking up this uh, santol, you know, and uh, also Indian mango. And mom, of course, was uh, the one cooking, no? Uh, the mom is a kapampangan cook, no? And uh, she's very good also. And um, he said, father, it is uh, with more conviction. I have more reason now. Later, I'll talk about the motives and the why. He said, I want to go back to med school. So he's, uh, he will apply again. I think he has more energy now. He was hurt, yes, the death of his father. And he was affected, but, uh, but he wants to return already to school. The third uh, lesson I've learned is about this uh, tattoo of the mind. Okay, so the story is like this. There's a... There's a particular uh, chaplain together with his uh, student, and they were walking, and they saw you know, uh, someone, and he had a tattoo. You know, uh, these days people have tattoo, okay? And uh, this uh, person had written on his chest, he says, uh, born to fail, or something like that. And then, uh, wow, this uh, the student was wondering, oh, how can he write that one? you know, uh, born to fail, or uh, it's almost like defeatist, and uh, uh, he will not succeed in life or whatever. You know what the master said? Uh, before the tattoo on the mind is that, oh, sorry, before the tattoo on the chest or the body is the tattoo in the mind. So before the, the tattoo in, on the body is the tattoo in the mind. In other words, uh, this is, of course, you can recall already that uh, one of the lessons uh, that we hear is uh, this cognitive behavioral therapy. CBT, no? And you can see one of the masters I have learned here is uh, this uh, Aaron Beck, no? Aaron Beck. And uh, Aaron Beck, uh, he noticed that in people who are depressed, predominantly they have negative thoughts. So it's important to find out what surfaces in their mind when people are feeling low and helpless and hopeless and, you know, and depressed and anxious, it's just good to ask what flashes through their mind. That's the word of, uh, uh, the word of uh, Aaron Beck. Now, because he notices that, that uh, like very negative thoughts and uh, all or nothing, etc. cetera. No? So in other words, when we talk about this uh, tattoo of the mind, it is really aware to be aware of self-defeating thoughts uh, and overly emotional reactions. So you have uh, strong emotions, but destructive behaviors, and, but you have these 
overwhelming these uh, thoughts that are very negative. And in fact, uh, they say uh, disaster is really a loss of a star, disastrous, no? So when you have a disaster, uh, what flashes to our mind? And of course, sometimes it is, uh, we feel bad, no? So uh, it is important to know what are the thoughts that can imprison or liberate us, no? Uh, later, we'll talk more about that also, that uh, the people who survive are the people with, uh, some people call it positive, but uh, people who find meaning in life, like what Viktor Frankl said. Okay, now what, uh, maybe some suggestions. Recognize your negative feelings. I always tell that, I give them homework. Recognize your negative feelings. Uh, let's say if you have the notebook and journal. On the left side, you write, what are your negative feelings? But on the right side, you find the blessings of your life and find what is positive. In fact, even Aaron Beck will say that, you know, uh, to test the reality of what you see. You see this negative thing, but it also widen the reality, the truth, no? So ask yourself, what gives meaning to your life? Uh, of course, uh, Viktor Frankl says that, no? And it, it usually meaning gives motivation in our life. What inspire you to take care? Uh, this one is probably what inspires you, no? To take care of your family, no? Uh, in other words, what gives you motivation, no? What gives you motivation? especially to help your family or other people. Uh, this guy, I was talking about this medical intern who uh, is more uh, motivated to return to go back to med school. So he says he'll apply in uh, July. So that's next month. And he might begin work uh, around end of July. So uh, he said uh, he will be, uh, he will be, uh, he wants to go back to medicine because he wants to give back to the people. He wants to, uh, his dream of helping other people uh, in sense of, sense of responsibility. His father also, uh, he, he, he has more motivation to return. Okay, now a question is what feelings and corresponding thoughts surprise you? So in other words, uh, always, no? Uh, the feelings will have uh, thoughts. So it's good to see the connection of the two. What are you most grateful? I mentioned that earlier, despite the adversities of your life. So remember what I told you, the, this uh, journal, the balanced journal. On the one hand, you look at, into your uh, negative feelings if you like, but on the other hand, you look into uh, the blessings of your life. Always, uh, what will balance your life despite some losses? Okay, now number four lesson that we have, uh, spot the inconsistency between the ideal and the real. This one is, uh, as you can see, Glasser, no? Glasser is one of the masters in the field uh, that we have ideals in life and there are things that uh, we need to, uh, they say the longest journey is from your ideals or what is in your head and into the action. Okay, now question. Sometimes what happens, and you can see this, uh, people have a lot of dreams. Uh, they say uh, many people will dream no? uh, about uh, doing this, doing that, you, you know. But uh, how many people will really put into action or make the dream come true? No? And uh, it's good to find out what stands in the way or there are blocks or we call it sometimes gaps. No? There are gaps between our ideals and what we want to do. So it's important to find out what are the obstacles sometimes. At the longest journey, we mentioned this already, is from the head to the heart to the hands. That's why in the, one of our uh, webinars, we talked about this baga, no? this uh, integration of the head, the heart, and the hand. And then uh, there's a distinction between what is expected and what is implemented. They always say, Filipinos, we dream a lot. You know, they say in some international conferences, wow, we really uh, uh, wow people in terms of a presentation. Uh, we even win contests. But the challenge is, um, uh, can we really put into action what we say? You know? uh, after about how many, after one year, we evaluate what we're doing. What is really being accomplished? No? Good question. Okay, uh, I always ask this, no? Uh, sample, how do you write your life now? 
what I'm saying right means the baseline of your life. What, what is the baseline of your life now? Zero to 10, you just uh, write uh, the answer. Zero is low, 10 is high. So have some uh, baseline answers of your life. Whatever answer you have, that will be your starting point. Let's say three, four, five, or six, whatever, or seven, that is where you begin. In other words, it's not always zero. And then when you know your baseline, then you can begin to the difference 10 minus, let's say seven, three. Three points will be uh, what else, what more can you do to improve uh, your deepest desires or your dreams? Uh, and also ask yourself, what are the blocks in the implementation of your dreams? Sometimes our fears, uh, it paralyzes us. Okay, number five. Number five is, uh, this one is taken from uh, one of the founders in the field and masters. Uh, this is uh, Milton Erickson. No? You, you ask people what are, uh, you know, uh, this Milton Erickson, he says, uh, uh, you have a choice to be free, to be open or withhold. In other words, all of us, we have a free choice. Uh, we can stay where we are or we can move on with life. Okay, now uh, we have many feelings, okay? Uh, sometimes we are aroused by many things. Uh, it is good to recognize that. Uh, this uh, Milton Erickson, he says, you are free and fully, no? Uh, your own in terms of your emotional desires. You can recognize this, but you don't have to act on it. So I think that's very good uh, to be able to recognize whatever things happening in our life. But that we are free to, uh, you know, to uh, act out on it or just recognize how we feel. In other words, we have this, what we call responsible choice. I, uh, this, uh, uh, what's his name? This, I always ask this also and, and I borrow this. You are free to be shallow or deep. You know what, what happens to people? When you say that I work with young people, I say you can be shallow or deep. What will they choose? Uh, they, you, uh, they choose the deep also, okay? And I think that's very important. You have a choice to discern or just be carried by impulse. You know, this is very hard because sometimes part of our pattern, we just do our, I, we call it disordered impulse, but uh, we realize that we have also a choice. Okay, now question. This is uh, especially important also. I have learned that we ask, what is unmanageable or out of control in your life or in my life? What is unmanageable? You know that uh, according to the people who have recovered, this is the first stage of the many steps that we will take in life. First, to go beyond the denial and just to recognize what is unmanageable or out of control. And then uh, you can be flooded or imprisoned by resentment. Oh, you will hear this all the time. Father, I, I, I can forgive, but I cannot forget. We always hear this all the time. In other words, the uh, people are imprisoned by hurts, by resentments. And uh, so uh, that is very real in other words. But the question is, are we going to be eaten up by our hurts or resentments of the past? Or are we, uh, uh, can we surrender this? Can we have a choice? to be eaten up by this uh, hurts or to let it go. I'm not saying that uh, to ignore it. I'm just saying that we have a choice. And we ask people, what is hard to let go in making choices? And sometimes, uh, gusto kong bumait pero di kumagawa, no? And because we're, sometimes we are torn between many choices. Okay, uh, another lesson we learn is uh, be who you are meant to be. Now, if you can see, uh, uh, many of the counselors or the masters will talk about this individuality. Uh, people talk about congruence. Uh, people talk about uh, who, who you are meant to be, no? Uh, uh, the best who you can be. Young people will say um, the best version of yourself. Okay, now as you can see, we can have a healthy ego. You remember that uh, in counseling, all the time, all the time, you will find out that part of mental health is just to recognize we need to define our boundaries. This healthy ego, it's just not selfish ego. We need to know what we can allow or not allow in our life. And of course, uh, sometimes uh, 
what will set the boundary would be this meaning. Uh, we always talk about this purpose. What is our burning bush of our life? Uh, we have uh, mentioned this already in our uh, Baga sessions or Komustahan. What is important value of your life? When I was trying to decide uh, whether to, to return to the Philippines or stay in the U.S., I asked myself, what is most important? What is most important is not the degree. Although, of course, this is important, especially for uh, some people, uh, especially in their economic promotion. But what's really, at least for me, what is important is to have that creative desire to start and to be different and to design. That's important for me. Okay? Uh, what are you willing to live for in your life, especially when there are a lot of rejections or, or a lot of frustrations we go through? What are we willing to live for? What will be the ethics of our life, the integrity of our life? So discover what is burning in your heart. This is like your burning bush of purpose. Okay, so question. What is your burning bush or higher purpose in your life? What will define your life? If you see, if you have a legacy for your life, what will define your life? Because what you do now will also be the rest of your life. I question amid the pandemic and the COVID-19 virus spread, what do you realize as most important? Uh, some people talk about family. People talk about faith. People talk about health as a priorities now and of course we ask what is most basic and fundamental in your life uh, and i think that's very important if you know what's basic this is like your center and it's like a compass of your life this will integrate your whole life you cannot have a double life so what is really important and what makes your life and what are you willing to live for and die for father Ruben Tanseco, he likes that Okay, the next one is, uh, we always say that uh, we can have many plans in our life, but who will do it? Like for example, if you have a family session or a marital session or an individual session, who will do it? So it's important who will take responsibility. Okay, so who'll be in charge especially or co-responsible uh, to make what is important of value. Last night I was talking to a couple and of course the husband has cancer stage four, so we don't know how long he will last. Uh, of course, the wife, whenever he's reminded of the infidelity of the husband, really gets angry, angry, you know? So, so that's the trigger. So I ask, you have only four months left. What will you do? The husband, he says, uh, he wants to, uh, he doesn't like the fighting okay, going on. And he says he wants to have a legacy for his province. And then, uh, you know, to help the people. Uh, to have fruit trees, to have this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, fish pond, whatever. So something meaningful for his, uh, for his people in the in his, uh, you know, hometown. And uh, I said, uh, what do you need from your wife? And I, I need the support of my wife. At the same time, of course, the wife wanted uh, commitment from the husband. No, is he faithful? You know, after the very last few moments, no, last months, or you know, that God is, is giving them. Uh, how can he be faithful or can he be committed? No? So in other words, we want to ask, uh, you know, what are we willing to commit? The battle we want to, you know, to fight no? and to do now to make it happen. Okay. Sabi ko palagi, wag lang umangal, ibalik ang gangal. Of course, among the drug addicts, they say, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. We cannot change a lot. No? Sometimes, uh, uh, we just have to accept. Sometimes at this time, there is resistance. I'll talk about it later. And uh, people are not willing to do changes. But there, is, there are some things we can change. We cannot change the environment, but sometimes we can do something uh, in our family or within us uh, or attitudes uh, or feelings that we can do just to see what goes on. Ah, I like this. Do not count the days. Make the days count. I like that one, no? Because we can worry about how long will this last? Or are we willing to make each day meaningful and blessed? So question, what meaningful rituals you need in the meantime? So I was uh, talking to 
I was talking to this uh, husband and uh, the the wife and he they always fight because the this uh, husband he has the sense to help other people the homeless etc but the wife is so worried they have a kid and uh, the husband when he returns from his uh, uh, mission that uh, it might infect the whole family so uh, you know it's an ongoing uh, uh, quarrel and i just asked the husband in the meantime how can you express your giftedness and your wife is not as worried so it's a, it's a balancing act to do you know in the meantime so what small or strategic steps you can do to realize your dream i was asking this husband you're gifted you're very creative you want to help other people you want to study what can you do in the meantime and not frighten your wife so uh, how will you realize your dream okay now this one is very important it's called um, role with resistance as you can see uh, it's not easy you no know, change is not easy there are always people who deny uh, the need for change so uh, and people have different pacing for change as you can see it is very hard to let go of something with derived profit uh, even this uh, uh, this psychiatrist they say there's a secondary gain people don't like to change why we want to hold on for example if this is if this were drug you know people don't like to let go of the drug why they derive some uh you know this uh, uh, uh fake dopamine if you like too much uh, pleasure and it, it's hard to let go and of course we know that change is incremental therefore we have to be uh patient with change uh, change take a long time as you can see even uh, fighting for the benefits and the promotion of guidance counselors uh, take a long time we have to be patient with change because we have to work with the congress people house of representatives we have to talk to the you know these uh, senators and we have to talk to uh, different institutions like depth ed and whatever we need support and of course uh, uh the question we have is uh what makes you seek help anyway remember for uh, this one is our favorite one especially for those who are resisting we say uh despite the difficulties now and, and uh, being forced for example to to uh, go for counseling but what makes you come anyway how can we make this uh, you know beneficial at this time what brought you here and make this time meaningful for you Okay, number nine, we're almost there. So uh, visualize change is about uh, having, uh, you know, uh, what is in your mind, what is in your imagination when you look for change. Now, uh, Virginia Satir, she says that uh, very powerful would be the metaphors or symbols. Even Milton Erickson will say this, uh, always on, be on the lookout for what are the symbols. You will see this, especially with dreams, no? Uh, when people have dreams and they talk about it and even in the language of people they say lang uh, language is uh, incurably metaphorical so be always on the lookout when people talk about certain images okay because these are powerful tools for change i say all the time when i was doing my masters no and even the doctorate if you can dream it you can achieve it in other words you have a picture in your mind okay now, in other words, be attentive to the metaphors your clients or counselors use during the session. Metaphors can also come from the counselor to convey the key points or motivation for change. In other words, the metaphors can be tools or motivation for change. Uh, and then symbols speak to the imagination and the heart. For example, uh, people talk about their families, People talk about their uh, the need for uh, perhaps uh, just acknowledge no uh, the gifts of people and how important that is. Okay, number ten. Uh, I like this. Uh, uh, how to be a positive change agent? Now, as you can see, the ending of uh, counseling or even the beginning or middle of counseling is like becoming a change agent for people, a positive one. So, what? How do you do that? Well, here there are some suggestions. When you look into, uh, remember we have this uh, strengths. When you look into the person, 
do you look into their negative uh, qualities or you say, wow, this person is very gifted? Sabi nga nung isang kausap ko, no, ah, wow, I can support my wife with this uh, baking and giving it to the people in the front lines. So there are people who uh, have uh, particular strengths. I remember my father, once in a while, oops, he will crack a joke. He's a serious person, but once in a while, it comes out. And uh, in other words, uh, learn the best of the past. My mom, I realized, my mom, uh, you know, uh, she's a vendor in the market. Simply lang po siya. And uh, she would be tired after the whole day of uh, selling in the market uh, this uh, mangoes or this uh, oranges, etc. No? She would be tired. But, you know, my mom will never fail. Like my father, he would bring home something, whether it's a hopia, whether it is uh, the native dishes or native merienda uh, from the market. She would always do that. And my mom would cook uh, dishes, is kapampangan, no? And she would uh, be creative in the way she cooked. I thank her for that. No? And all of us, we, we can find what is best. My dad is also very good in organizing and uh, in the parish, you know, and, uh, and he will do that. No? And uh, he said, uh, uh, I want to ask you to pray for my son. He's in the family ministry. And I thank him for that, no? to bring out the best in people and allow them to shine. Okay, so in other words, when we look into our history, what works best in the history of the counseling? This is like solution focus, like what uh, Steve DeJager is talking about. This is like a summary, okay? In counseling, what do you do? What do you need to do for self care? This is important. Self care is like defining the person, set boundaries, or bonding, or creative compassion. Now, this is very important, no? the boundaries or bonding this is the summary of counseling what we have okay now question what gifts can you offer for significant others or for the common good remember our giftedness is not for us it is meant for other people for our counselees for the people in the community you know hey almost there this is number 11 uh, again, I told you that this is the summary of counseling, like boundary or bonding and boundless compassion. I, I mentioned this already in the Baga no? sessions or Komustahan we have, the arithmetic of life. It's good to find this accounting of life. What do you need to subtract? What do you need to add? What do you need to divide in your life or you know, for cooperation teamwork? What do you need to multiply? Always, always in the inventory of our life, we're always doing some balancing work. What do I need to minus? Like uh, I was telling you already in the previous webinar that this young person said, na sobrahan na po yata ako ng, ng Netflix or ng video games or ng board game, whatever, no? And, uh, and you know, I, too much, no? And, and makawala ng time for exercise and whatever, no? So balancing. And then traffic of life, you have uh, traffic, of course, mawabalik na tayo ulit dyan because some of the checkpoints are being opened. Red, yellow, and green. So this is very symbolic. What do you need to stop in your life? You know, that's very hard. Sometimes the self-management is very hard. So what do you need to stop? What yellow is like, uh, okay, uh, cautious. And then green, go, no? Do more of like uh, whatever, but it can be gardening or it can be study or it can be, you know, creative uh, design of your room, cleaning your room, whatever. But assignments and homework. In counseling, we do all the time. Assignments, sit work, homework, okay? We do this all the time. And of course, uh, here, uh, how do you express self-care or setting boundaries? Again, this is the summary of counseling. Self-care or setting boundaries. How do you connect or reach out in creative compassion or social solidarity? You may have this uh, physical distance. But we can have social solidarity. No, some people are scared of this. Uh, now we're in the digital world, but we can use technology, especially for other people. I have never been as busy as now, no, because uh, of this uh, webinars, this uh, uh, just make komustahan with people, and at the same time, different sectors and also uh, psycho spiritual support like uh, masses, you know. And how does balance? Uh, what is balance asking of you from the perspective of greater love? Okay, so let me correct that. So what does balance ask of you? 
from the perspective of greater love, no? Yeah. Okay, in other words, uh, if you see the balance of your life, what is greater love asking of you? Okay, this is the last part. I like this because, uh, uh, you know, uh, in our life, it's not always as neat and simple. Uh, sometimes we have some things that are dysfunctional, if you like, out of control, unmanageable. But I like what the drug addicts say. Our mess, if we're able to recognize it, this seemingly chaos in our life, there is order. And how can we make this mess into a message? Or I call it, in the crack vessel of our life, how can we be a source of water for life for other people? Like that. remember the story of this crack vessel? Uh, thought that, uh, you know, I cannot carry water. But later on, when was asked to return, the flowers were blooming, you know? So what is the purpose of our life? Of course, uh, we're not all perfect. There are wounds in our life, in our memories. But our wounds will become a source of uh, uh, compassion for other people. And we become light for the world. Okay. So again, we ask, what out-of-control behavior or unmanageable, unmanageable behaviors turn out to be a miracle in your life. In other words, uh, sometimes the difficulties of our lives can become lessons for other people. What weaknesses you have that became a source of strength for others. In other words, our weaknesses sometimes can become inspirations for other people because we're able to rise above this uh, poverty, this unmanageable behaviors, you no know, addictions in our lives, but somehow we're able to serve to thrive, not only survive. So what is the burning bush of purpose in your life? What message will we want to carry to other people? Okay, these are just some steps that uh, people in the recovery program, uh, uh, they say are important. The need for admission, you know, honesty, hope, surrender, you know, courage, uh, the need for uh, integrity, and even the idea of having contact with the higher power the willingness to do something about things and to correct things, make amends, no? And of course, uh, uh, this awareness that we can make a difference in the lives of other people. Okay. These are just some of the lessons that uh, I have given. Uh, okay. And now it's a time for uh, open forum. If you have any questions or comments, uh, perhaps we can spend the next few minutes for uh, Francis. Are you there? I think Francis had, uh, uh, what's this? Uh, had a meeting with Dep Ed, okay? Uh, anyone? Yes, yes, Father. Oh, he's back already. Thanks, Francis. Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah. We can open out okay. the floor for some maybe comments or questions, if I can answer. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Father Ted, thank you very much for uh, your presentation on uh, mental health lessons from the matters. Uh, we have here uh, one question, the first question. Uh, huh. What will you do if things doesn't go according to your plan? How can you cope with it easily? Uh, that's, the, that's our first question one. Yeah, that's a hard one, no? Because uh, <laughs> things are not going according to your plan. In other words, uh, there is some we want. Of course, we want to plan and we want to manage. We want to control. Ah, that's what it is. Okay, I remember the story of this. Uh, who is this guy who started Alibaba? What's his name? The one who started Alibaba, the one in the in China. Okay. Uh, anyway, he said people always talk about winning. People always talk about winning. Uh, but he said, people don't talk about their failures. But he said, sometimes the failures are the ones that will have greatest lessons in our lives. When we can surrender our control. Not always winning. But to, because sometimes when we fail, that's the time when... Uh, we're asked to review our life, to make an inventory of life. So well, all I'm saying is uh, for now, when the plans uh, don't work, maybe it's good to ask, am I doing, sometimes I do it uh, psycho-spiritually. 
So I say, maybe uh, are we asking the right questions? Maybe uh, we can also ask, what are God's plans? Maybe maybe we, we plan things, but maybe there's a greater purpose. Can we ask also this greater plan? Okay, uh, Francis, that's okay. Francis, next question or comment? Okay, uh, yes, next question, Father. Uh, what is the best way to deal with toxic people? Oh, wow. You ask very hard questions. Okay, how do you deal with toxic people? Well, I, I, can, I can just say what I do, okay? Uh, sabi nga nila, it's very hard to... Uh, I'm saying it's very easy to forgive, very hard to forget. In other words, we continue to experience these toxic people of our life. And sometimes we even work with them and we cannot avoid them. I like what the people in the addictions work say. Serenity prayer. What is serenity prayer for them? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. So what does it say? To have a peace of mind, or if you remember, mind is not, or mental is not just mental. It's really the soul. It's our uh, overall disposition. And it says that uh, there are some things we cannot change. We just have to accept, including toxic people, if you like. But me, I do it psycho-spiritually. The first one is I surrender that the people who are toxic. We have a lot of toxic people in our lives. They are called trolls or they are called, uh, I don't know, no? bullies or whatever. But me, I pray for them. Even when I say mass, and every day, every morning, I pray for people who are toxic and uh, people who have hurt me in my life. I just bless them. In other words, you rise above. You rise, rise above your hurts or your bad feelings or negative. Remember what I said earlier with our lessons from the masters? You recognize this uh, toxic part of life, uh, but you detoxify it also. Uh, even drug addicts know that, that you cannot stay with the toxic. We need to, uh, or maybe you ask uh, Doc Rick, okay? He will know that, okay? You have to remove this, uh, the pus in our life. You have to let it go, okay? And, but you have to find a vaccine or you have to find uh, somehow a greater spirit to remember even the Lord, he was on the cross. And he said uh, he was with toxic people. He was rejected. He was uh, nailed to the cross. But he said, no, he learned to surrender himself to the higher designs of the Father. And then he said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You know, there was another guy who was saying that uh, uh, if you're really the son of God, go down. You know, you make some miracle. You, you know. Uh, impress people. Uh, but uh, uh, another side, another guy who was on his right, he was, uh, uh, you know, he was also accused of being a criminal. He said, uh, he was bit more humble. He said, you know, what, what, what is happening in our life? It's partly our doing, you know, we're, yeah, but this guy is innocent. But he said, uh, I know uh, you're the master, but when you reach your paradise, can you remember me? I think that's beautiful, no? Here recognized that he had weaknesses, but he said, please remember me when you reach paradise. Okay, as in other words, uh, to recognize uh, these uh, uh, people in our lives, we don't, uh, like what we said, you love your enemies. In fact, you see, even if they don't show it, but uh, see the best in them, or at least uh, the best in the making, no? Because we have a lot now with those people, no? It is so easy just to have part of this hate. Uh, this uh, Right now, there are so many people just uh, allowing this uh, anger, eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, just out of control. And the uh, question is, uh, how do we rise above all this and not weaponize with disinformation or weaponize the law, of, for example, no? but you to find that there is a greater purpose in our life. There's a greater spirit or whatever. Anyway, okay. Thank you, Francis. Anything more?
Yes, uh, we have uh, more questions, Father. Uh, another question here. Uh, so how do we deal with the uh, professional bullies? Uh, uh, since ah. there are some <laughs> who wow. are bullies uh, within their profession. Or, yes, yes. Yeah, within the, yes, okay. Well, you can see that the bullies are actually like tyrants, okay? Uh, according to Jose Rizal. There are no tyrants if there are no slaves. So in other words, we can allow the bullies to remain bullies if we allow them that way. But we can do it in the... Uh, you know, another way. Maybe what you can do is, if they are bullies, what we can do is we can be professional. We don't have to be bullies. In other words, we don't have to do this eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, or putting down people. What we can do is to do quiet service. We can be professional in our work. We can be experts in our field. We can continue to read. We can continue to study and uh, in our particular area. We can continue to experiment. We can continue to, in other words, to be the best version of what we can be or who we can be. In other words, the bullies uh, are actually insecure. They want to put down people because they don't know how to work with people. They just put down people. But I think the people who are good leaders, they shine. How do they do it? They find other people to work with. In other words, uh, they begin to recognize the gifts in the community. They begin to uh, cooperate. They're not subservient. They allow criticism, okay? But feedback, feedback is good because then we can correct things. But the thing is, uh, if we are bullies, we put down people, we, you know, we try to quell dissent or whatever, and we terrorize people. Uh, I don't think that's good. The thing is uh, we have to have this dignity shared to people, and we have to respect the dignity of everyone and allow the giftedness to shine and you know, allow other, like I, I like this one, that uh, uh, our students, of course, we give them right information. And I think that's true, important. No? But it's also important we allow the flame of their imagination to come out. No? Even in counseling, it's like that, isn't it? We don't like people to be bullies. What we want them to be is to be the most humane people they can be. Because the bullies are actually, uh, it's like external, a lot of hatred and anger. The bullies, once upon a time, had a history of being bullied also. So it's good to see, uh, to understand the story of people, what happened in their life. In other words, it, it, I think it's incumbent upon us to have a greater vision of what people are and their dignity. In fact, the Lord says, love your enemy, okay? I like what uh, Mahatma Gandhi said. Okay, you can inflict pain in me, but I'll still speak the truth. I'll still be creative. I still will work for freedom and what we can be. I, and I can work for good structures in life. Okay, Francis. Francis, are you there? Yes, Father. Uh, okay, another ahead. question, Pa. Uh, how can we let go of past memories? And siguro yung follow-up question niya is uh, um, uh, about let, since it's uh, about past memories, then I will connect it sa letting go po. So follow-up question is letting go a bad thing or good thing? Does it make us uh, make us weak? or stronger ah. so these are past memories i think these are very important questions that you have like this uh, memories no memories as you can see two edged the memories can traumatize us but the memories can also be lessons for life uh, what do we do with the trauma of our life what we do with painful memories if you like uh, disgusting if you like what we can do is to recognize it 
that we were hurt somehow in the past and uh, it has affected us. So I think uh, with memories that are very painful, we recognize. But also sometimes the memories uh, that have been hurt, they can be, that's why we call healing of memories. So we recognize it. And then in fact, uh, in some of the, in some uh, uh, these uh, theories or even in the, uh, healing of our memories. We think of uh, we think of memories, uh, especially in our past, that are very healing. So we match the painful memory with a memory which really brought out the best in us. Or if you like, to this one by Father Bulatau, and they also I think Milton Erickson will also do this. He will invite the person to go to a place in his memory or in his heart, or in his soul, to recall that memory of uh, a place, a person, a sacred place, if you like, or a person, a mentor. Remember, we talk about these masters. You go to the mentor or significant person of your life, or if you like, this uh, God in our life, higher power, some people call it, especially the recovering guys, to go to that person and then begin to listen. I think that's beautiful. Because if we hear, because remember, uh, when people are traumatized, people who have bad memories like rape or uh, sexual abuse or whatever, no, these uh, bad memories, to go to a particular memory where we find our strength, the people who make a difference in our lives and listen to these people, the masters, the people who, yung uh, paano kita mapapasalamatan, ganyan. I remember I was watching early morning today, this morning lang, I was listening to this new program by Angel Loxin. And uh, uh, she, you know, recognizes lang. She recognizes the people who make a positive uh, difference in the lives of people. So uh, this, uh, for example, this uh, young person who is, uh, I think he's gay or whatever, and, uh, you know, he's a good dancer, no? and uh, recognizes vice ganda. No? Uh, and then, uh, uh, and, and, but very supportive parents and and even Vice Ganda gave a cell phone to him. Kasi mahilig mag-tiktok itong batang ito. And then uh, another one, um, uh, uh, an old lady, wid widow, no? uh, lost the husband. Uh, but you know, yung mga anak niya, pinapag-aral niya, ganyan. And then you have this, uh, uh, instead of uh, itong mga anak niya, I think they were well-trained. Sabi nila, mama, Huwag na natin pabayaran itong matandang ano, gustong umingi ng tawa dito sa bisikleta, bicycle, no? And, uh, you know, these uh, children said, mag-ambag na lang po kami. You know, and they gave the gift to this old man who had to work, no? And uh, especially during this time, di ba? Walang kinikita yung mga tao. So, you know, he gave this bicycle. The family gave this bicycle to this old man and returned the 2,000 pesos to him. That was a big one. And then, of course, uh, the trauma of uh, uh, the story of this uh, person who lost his leg. But this person, he continued to work, no? Continued to take care of his family and to be a source for the, you know, ano siya, taga-deliver, ganyan. And uh, ang parang make a wish, no? So what uh, Angel Oxin and the others uh, did, uh, yung pambayad na extra dun sa, sa, bis, the, ano, sa bike, sabi nila, we'll cover that. Thank you for making a difference. Hindi ka nawala ng pag-asa. No? The trauma of losing a leg. And then, uh, the other story is uh, Father Flavi. Father Flavi is a good friend. Of course, he's being accused by this, uh, you know, some people in the administration, you know, whatever. But you know, this guy, Father Flavi, he was once upon a time, uh, he sinasabi naman niya, once upon a time, you know, I was in trouble and uh, I was into addiction, whatever. But, you know, 
he turned around and nagpari pa nga ganun and then uh, now he's taking care of the homeless and that particular time uh, ito yung parang kasi covid-19 social distancing wala silang lugar so but you know he took he continued to take care of them uh, some schools like La Salle or Saints and the other places they just or churches they open the, no, their places for the homeless and father flabby just continued to take care of them you know we have a lot of bad memories but we allow that bad memories to be healed and ano nangyari dito sa ginawa nila angeloxin naganap sila ng uh, of course yung as you can see uh, this abs cbn meron sila mga diba yung pantawid gutom and whatever so they were giving rice and then at the same time uh, they gave uh, ano uh, they contacted the government uh, especially manila so manila uh, with through the dswd they had another house for this homeless the trauma of being homeless but so what ano nangyari doon like uh, transform this trauma can be a blessing one day so what i'm saying is how do we heal the woundedness of the past learn the lessons and then look forward to a future where the goodness in people and i think i believe that that uh, whatever trauma we have at this particular time we can be better people than this all right we are beyond the trolls we are we are beyond this uh, weaponizing the you know the internet and uh, this information so we can be better than that uh, than all this trauma yeah we can be a blessing for people okay francis okay uh, another question uh, uh, but before our next question we would like again to remind our participants that the post evaluation link uh, will be posted in our uh fb page again uh our post test and evaluation link will be posted po sa ating uh, fb page if may makikita po kayo na uh, certificate uh, doon po yung ating uh, uh, evaluation link and you will only have 45 minutes to do your post test and evaluation okay uh next uh, question father uh uh, this is a recurring question I have seen in our, our YouTube chat. Uh, so how how do we spot uh, toxic positivity, uh, positivity from genuine optimism? Bob? Okay, um, that's a very good question. And uh, so toxic positivity and the other one is what? Uh, genuine optimism. Ah, okay, okay. Sige. Uh, as you can see, Yung toxic positivity is toxic. So, in other words, uh, it is not really positive. It is, uh, siguro sa akin, it is toxic because we're not recognizing uh, that there are parang difficulties in life or adversities or pain. What we want to find out is, uh, and also to spot, is uh, recognize there are painful moments of life. There are toxic people in life, uh, but we do not deny it. In other words, uh, we're like uh, not spiritualizing or something uh, so that we don't recognize the pain in our life. We want to recognize there is pain, but at the same time, uh, this genuine optimism, or maybe I'll call it better, hope. Hope is hold on. Possibilities exist despite the disaster, despite the addictions, despite corruption, despite the bullying, despite the you know frustrations we have in life, despite this COVID nineteen. Sabi nga ng mga tao, those uh, we hear, no? Sabi nila, this God or this higher power is bigger than this uh, death or than this virus or this droplet this will pass so in other words there is genuine hope that there is a purpose bigger than this uh, difficulties we go through and it's not toxic because there's real pain there is real death there is real loss for example may iba walang mga trabaho no and of course that's very painful no in fact i heard I hear that uh, sa EDSA raw at saka sa maraming lugar sa Metro Manila that uh, mayroong iba, naka, may karatula. 
at and they are begging no uh, wala silang trabaho laging iba mga jeepney drivers and kasi hindi pa yan pwede yan, di ba so wala silang kinikita no and uh, nagugutom i i also heard that the other day sa radio daw may, may mga nagsasabi na nagugutom na sila ganoon and of course uh, as you can see this uh, quarantine is taking a longer time and nakatatlong buwan na yata tayo no uh, we really pray for genuine compassion to live on despite this uh, trying time no and to have hope no and to really reach out to people kasi this are totoo yan eh na nangyayari sa ating paligid no okay francis uh so thank you very much father we are uh overwhelmed and uh, much uh, uh and we are grateful to our uh, webinar participants who are joining us this uh, morning for our webinar mental health uh, lessons from the masters uh, facilitated uh, by father ted gonzalez so thank you very much uh but as much as we would like to entertain your questions uh we are uh we are short of time uh, but before we formally end with this uh, webinar a little reminder lang po uh Paris and counseling association is uh, uh in partnership with the, the national center for mental health uh and uh, we are part of uh, the telemental uh health of uh, the ncmh uh, for their hotline uh, crisis number okay so please take note of that and a few reminders at the end of this webinar so again uh, yung post uh, test and evaluation natin uh, will be posted po sa ating uh, tgca uh, facebook page okay so please answer in uh, 45 minutes, okay? So after this, you'll give in uh, 45 minutes to answer your uh, post-test and evaluation. Uh, we, uh, then uh, your e-certificates will be emailed to your email address uh, indicated in your registration and post-test and evaluation. So uh, since we are dealing with thousands of your um, E certificates please give us time to send it to you so if you have concerns with the, with the certificates please do email the pgca certificate at gmail.com doon po tayo mag email ng ating uh, concerns okay so so that uh, isahan lang po yung pag uh, answer ng uh, uh, queries nyo uh, since if uh, you, you will message our page, then we will have uh, umaga, difficulty pa to transfer the uh, message to our uh, in charge. Uh, also, we'd like to thank our PGSA Secretariat team uh, who are making these things possible with uh, Sir Mr. Dan Talusan, our secretary, and uh, our assistant secretary, Ma'am uh, MC Garcia. Then together with our PGCA uh, uh, employees, uh, Juvi Andelion and uh, Vince Sarcon. Then of course, uh, our volunteer, uh, Miss uh, Justin Joyce Bual. Then we thank also uh, the FEU peers. The po yung ati mga peer facilitators from the Far Eastern University, uh, in the leadership of uh, Sir Dan. So graphics, uh, posters, and certificates po, and even the sending of our uh, certificates. So for graphics, posters, and certificates, thank you very much, FEU peers. Then yung sending of certificates, uh, thank you din po sa team. And then, uh, Sir Dan and Doc Shake sa ating uh, FEU guidance team. So thank you for that. Uh, so for the schedule of our coming uh, upcoming webinars, uh, nakapost din po sa ating PGSA official page. So next Tuesday, please join me on uh, the discussion. Uh, 
uh, sa ating issues and concerns about uh, the practice of guidance and counseling. Again, we would like uh, our viewers, please invite uh, to ask, uh, we would like to ask our viewers to please invite your school heads, our uh, supervisors, our managers, uh, those uh, policy makers and even our legislators po, um, maybe their legis staff to join us so that makikita, makita din nila ano yung nangyayari, anong issues and challenges ng ating mga guidance counselors in the provision of mental health services, guidance and counseling services, and of course, yung career guidance services. So please uh, do invite them uh, for the Tuesday's webinar. And... Uh, Ito po, ito na yung natapos nating mga webinar. Uh, so we still have uh, on next uh, Thursday, one week from now, uh, Dr. Adelaida Hines on June 25, uh, Best Fit Therapeutic Practices During the COVID-19 Contagion. And on June 26, we have uh, Dr. Maria Lourdes Medina uh, on the quality of life in times of crisis. Please, please stay tuned also. We might have uh, uh, additional uh, webinars on July. We are still talking uh, about that. Okay, Francis. Marami okay. Salamat. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so with that, thank you. Thank you very much, Father Ted. And uh, good morning, everyone.